All right, today we're going to spend some time looking at the graphs of sine and cosine. So what I want you to think about first is remember that um, if we are talking about sine and cosine um, on the unit circle, that sine is the y value and cosine is the x value. Okay, so on the entire unit circle, on this entire thing, we never go higher than 1 or lower than negative 1, and we never go left more than negative 1 and right negative 1. So that means the range is between negative 1 and 1. So y is always going to be between negative 1 and 1. Um, and the same thing is going to be true for the domain. Okay, so sine and cosine both have a range of between negative 1 and 1. Okay, um, also when we go around the unit circle, remember our positive angles, we go this way. And then once we get here, they start repeating. Right, so it's just another time around, another time around, another time around. So our sine and cosine values keep repeating. So anytime we take another trip around, that's another 360 degree, or remember that's also 2 pi. Um, that just means that we're one rotation around the circle. So anytime you're taking sine of some number t, and if you add 2 pi n, and n just means n is any um, integer. So 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, so on. That is just going to get you to the same thing as sine of t because this part is just adding a rotation. Same thing happens with cosine. That 2 pi n, anytime you add a multiple of 2 pi, you're just adding an, another rotation or subtracting. It could be negative. So cosine of t plus 2 pi n is just cosine of t. So what that means is that sine and cosine, those values keep repeating because you keep going around and around the unit circle. And they repeat every 2 pi. So we call them periodic functions because all the values repeat periodically. And that period is 2 pi. Every 2 pi, we start on a new cycle, and they repeat. Now, um, let me erase all those scribbles here because we're going to use a unit circle again, maybe. All right. The cosine function is actually an even function because if you take a negative angle, the cosine of a negative t, that's the same thing as cosine of a positive t. Let me show you that. Let's say we go negative 45 degrees, so we come down here. Okay, so we have this x value gives us that point. If we go positive 45 degrees, it's the same x value. So cosine is going to be the same for these two points. The same thing's going to happen with secant since it's a reciprocal. So we call cosine and secant are even functions. Even functions have y-axis symmetry. So in a minute, we are going to graph the cosine function, and you'll see that it has y-axis symmetry. Now, all of the other functions um, are a little bit different. Go back to our unit circle. Let's look at sine in particular. So if we go negative 45 degrees right here, we have this y value, okay, negative 2 root 2. If we go positive 45 degrees, it's the same y value, but it's in the other direction. So the sine right here, the sine of negative t is the opposite of the sine of t. Same thing's going to happen with cosecant, and the same thing happens with tangent and cotangent. So we call those odd functions. Odd functions have origin symmetry. We're going to graph the sine function first, and you'll see that it has origin symmetry, um, and then in a day or two we'll graph tangent, but it also has origin symmetry. So we want to use all this information and we want to graph the sine function. You did this in Algebra 2, but I just want you to see it again. So we're going to create a table of x, y values, and I'm going to plug in 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, so I first I'm going to plug in 0. I want to know what is the sine of 0. And we can think about our unit circle. Okay, here's 0 degrees. And so that's the point 1, 0. And remember, sine is the y value. So that is going to be 0. So we have the point 0, 0. All right, now pi over 2. We want to plug in pi over 2 into our sine function. So pi over 2 is up here. That's the point 0, 1. Remember, sine is the y-coordinate, so the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So over here, if this is pi over 2, it's 
so y value is 1. Okay, now we're going to plug in pi, sine of pi, that's over here. This point is negative 1, 0. Um, the sine is the y value, so that's 0 again. So if we're here at pi, it's 0. Then we're going to plug in 3 pi over 2, which is down here. Let's see, that's 0, negative 1. So the y coordinate is sine, so negative 1. So let's extend this out. So if 3 pi over 2, it's going to be negative 1. And finally, we're going to plug in 2 pi. So 2 pi is all the way around the circle, back here to this point. Y coordinate is 0. So at 2 pi, we are back at 0. So the function y equals sine x looks like this. It's this wave. Okay, We call it a sine curve. And then, remember, these are periodic functions. So it takes 2 pi to get through an entire cycle, and then the cycle is just going to repeat. It's going to repeat, and it's going to keep repeating, and it goes in this direction as well. Okay, And notice everything that we said up here before is true. Um, it has origin symmetry. Remember, that's 180 degree rotation. And what was the other thing? Oh, the range was between negative 1 and 1. Okay, Our sine function is not going any higher or lower than that. All right, I know this is a little bit of a long video, but let's go ahead and graph cosine so we can see what that looks like. And um, I won't scroll too far so we can use the same unit circle. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to do an xy table. So 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I'm going to plug in 0. So the cosine of 0, we're at this point right here, and this time we're looking at the x-coordinates, so that's 1. So I have the point 0, 1. All right, then we're going to do cosine of pi over 2. That's up here. We're looking at the x-coordinate, which is 0. So we have pi over 2, 0. Now we're going to plug in pi. It's over here. Cosine is negative 1. So we're at pi, negative 1. Then we're going to plug in 3 pi over 2, which is down here. X coordinate is 0. So we have 3 pi over 2, 0. And finally, we're going to plug in 2 pi. 2 pi is back where we started. And that's 1. So the cosine function looks like this. That is the graph of y equals cosine x. Okay, remember it's periodic. So every 2 pi, from 0 to 2 pi, it goes through an entire cycle. So it's going to go through the cycle again and again in the other direction. I apologize for the banging noise. That is my dog playing with a chew toy. She's impossible. Okay, all of the things we said are true. It has y-axis symmetry. Notice it is symmetrical about the y-axis. Um, the range is between negative 1 and 1. Okay, um, So you should know these two functions. You should know the sine function. You should know the cosine function. You need to know that it, they both have a period of 2 pi. Um, good grief, dog. The sine function starts at 0, 0. Okay. The way I remember this is sine starts on its upward slope, and then it goes through its cycle. Cosine starts, if you think of this as the crest of the wave, it starts at its crest, and then it goes through its full cycle. So you need to know these two very basic functions well, because the next thing we're going to do is use transformations to move them all over the place. Now I'm going to go take that toy away from my dog. <laughs>